Hi everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron and in today's episode of Dye Time I am not throwing away this leftover dye. Originally this was two grams of uh, violet acid dye from DT Craft and Design. Um, I was kettle dyeing some yarn and this is left over. And instead of throwing it away I thought I'd get a skein of this is 100 grams of superwash merino yarn. It has been pre-soaking for probably about, probably about 15 minutes. I, uh, it looks like this is, there's not actually much dye in there at all. So I'm just going to put that in there. So because this is an animal fiber, this needs heat and acid. And there is already acid in here. There's plenty, there, I added plenty of vinegar. And doesn't really look like there's much dye getting onto the yarn. If you can see in the pot, it's already starting to strike to the yarn. So this is going to be very, very pale violet. So I'm just going to leave that, turn the heat up, and hopefully we'll, we'll come back when all of this dye has set to the yarn. This has been on the heat for about 10 minutes. It's not overly hot. I can still stick my fingers in there. It's quite warm, but uh, and, and it looks like all the dye is in the yarn. There are some patches like that which are quite pale and but overall it's quite it's quite tonal it's really pretty I really like this but I am going to add a bit more dye to this so what I'm going to do is move it to another pan and then I can add a bit more dye I have pulled out three of my leftover dye stocks I've got fluorescent fuchsia from Dharma purple pop from Dharma and cyan from DT craft and design I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of them I'm just going to, there's no heat on this at the moment, I've squeezed out the water. I'm just going to, I'm just going to just squeeze a little bit of drop, little drops on this one and shake it up. This is left over from April, April and it's now November. So I'm just going to do little bits don't want to go overboard because this is a really nice lilac colour but I think this might be pretty uh, I did think the cyan might be quite nice but I'm not sure I'm going to need it I'm just there we go I think I'll do a little bit up there there we go Leave it at that for now. I'm going to add some water from uh, what this was in from my dye pot. So I'm <laughs> using up that water as well. I'm just going to try and set this low immersion style. Uh, that's probably enough for now. Turn the heat on. And come back in about 10 minutes hopefully this will all be nice and set and then I can flip this and maybe do a little bit on the other side it's been about 10 minutes but I'm not sure if it really needed that time there's very very little dye here even though purple pop is one that takes a while to set but it looks like it's set already so I'm going to flip this over and Try to spread it out. And I'm going to just do some more drops on this side. I don't think I'm going to use the fluorescent fuchsia or the cyan. I think I think the purple pops probably enough. Oh, <laughs> you want that? Um, what's what I was hoping for, which is what has happened. If you see over here you can see the purple and then there's a bit of a pink halo which is which often happens with the purple pop I think purple pop is made of fluorescent fuchsia plus another green not green blue I'm not sure which blue but it seems like the blue sets quite quickly and the fluorescent the fluorescent dye takes a long longer which is why I I was hoping to get that little pink halo and you often do get that pink halo and or when you use purple pop 
you get a lot of pink left over. I forgot to mention that all of this stuff is dedicated for dyeing. I don't use any of it for food. And when I did make up these dye stocks originally, I did use mask, I did wear a mask and gloves. I'm quite happy with this. I'm going to maybe flip it again just to really, oh, that's pretty, <laughs> that's quite pretty like that. Just to get a little bit more, the tiniest amount of purple pop. And it doesn't look like there's really anything in the, in the water, so just using my left hand for this, and I'm right, very, very right-handed, so this is quite awkward for me. But if I use my right arm, uh, it will just go in front of the camera, and you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So, and I have to do it this way because I've only got three burners that work on my stove. The top, the top left one, which is what I um, I would be using it doesn't work at the moment so yeah that's just a little insight <laughs> there we go I'm going to leave this again and then I'll pro then I'll, I'll see if I need to flip it another one more time actually no I'm not going to leave it let's just keep moving it hopefully dye is striking looks, uh, I think, right, I'm going to leave it after this one because I think the die isn't striking completely. I don't know. I'm just going to drip this on. This time I'm going to leave it for about 10 minutes. We'll see what it looks like in 10 minutes. So this has been another 10 minutes. And I am pretty happy with this actually. I, like, I really like the spots that are there. I really like those. So what I'm going to do, I think, is spread it out one more time. Oh, if I can. This is now very hot. <laughs> I can't move it around as easily as I did. Yeah, that purple pop is definitely spreading through the yarn. It's a lot darker than it was, but that's not a problem. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to add a little bit more, a few more spots or drip <laughs> dribbles. Leave it at that. No more, less is more, less is more. I have to keep telling myself. I'm going to add a little bit more vinegar. I can't remember how much vinegar is in this already but I'm just going to add a bit more because purple pop sometimes needs an extra bit of help. There goes three tablespoons of vinegar in there and I'm going to add a bit more water to make this more full immersion as the water keeps evaporating away. There we go. Really want that dye to set to the yarn so I just added in the rest of the water from that original um, there we go, from the original uh, bath, there we go, that's it, that's it, no more, no more, and now I'm just going to leave this to heat set for probably about 20 minutes. This has been on the heat for about 20 minutes now, and it looks like most of that dye is in the yarn. That purple pop has spread out, and it's created this gorgeous colour, and uh, there are still some little splodges here and there, but mostly it's just this gorgeous lilac yarn that I really, really love. So I'm going to turn the heat off now and let this cool down and then I can wash it. This yarn has completely cooled down now and it doesn't look like there is any hint of colour in that water at all, which is great because there wasn't that much colour that I added to begin with. So, oh, that is really cold. All right, I'm just going to rinse this through with some cold tap water. It's smelling quite vinegary. So I'm going to add in some washing up liquid to help get rid of that vinegary smell to shift anything that might not be bound to the yarn. But it looks 
Like that water's running pretty clear, which is fantastic. I love it when yarn does that and I don't have to wash it loads and loads. Uh, so I'm just gonna rinse that through a few times then I can hang it up to dry. And here is the finished yarn. It's a lovely balanced pinky purpley color. Um, the purple pop has sort of blended out and just created this really nice color. We've got some sort of darker purple spots here. We've got a nice um, sort of pinkish bit here. And there are some specks of color, or splodges of color I should say, sort of running through. We've got some nice pink bits there, some sort of purple. And I'm sure I saw a blue splodge somewhere or something that looked almost blue. Yeah, see those look almost blue to me. I don't know what you think, but I think it looks, uh, let me know what you think. Does it look sort of almost blue, some of those splodges? But overall, this is really, really nice yarn and there isn't a big pattern on the yarn. There isn't too many colors. So this would hold up well with something like lace where the the design is in the, the knit or the crochet, not the actual yarn itself. I wanted to see if this yarn glowed under a black light because it does have a little bit of fluorescent dye in it. But if you have if you have a look, it sort of does, I think. Uh, it's it's a lot brighter in person than it is on camera. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. But then I've got this here, which is made with a lot of fluorescent dyes, and you can really see how those yellows and oranges really pop on screen. You can see the blue there. That hasn't got any any fluorescent dye in. So if I compare that, I guess no. It prob I guess this yarn probably doesn't really glow under a UV light. There's just not enough of that purple pop in there. And actually, if you have a look at this, this section here is purple pop. But as there's no fluorescent blue dye, it's just the fluorescent pink, which is the same as up here. Just a little bit. It's, it's just not as strong. So I can't actually see any of that in here. So if we can, again, compare it with the blue. On, on camera, at least, it certainly doesn't look like there's any fluorescent dye. And actually, you can see some of that glow reflecting off of the, the, um, the purple yarn. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do please click like and subscribe to my channel. I publish a new dyeing tutorial every Monday around about 6 p.m. UK time here on my YouTube channel. So make sure you've got your notifications turned on so you don't miss a new video. And I do like to experiment with different dyes and fibers, uh, different techniques. I like to mix up techniques. I don't like to waste any dye. So there should always be something new and interesting to watch here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching.